So you want to become a UI UX designer, but you have no idea where to start. I feel you. All you see nowadays is how to use Figma, but UI UX design is much more than that. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to become a UI UX designer step by step. Step number one, define your path. The first thing you need to do is figure out whether you want to become a UI designer, a UX designer, or a UI UX designer. Sounds confusing? Here is the difference between them. UI designers focus on the visual elements users interact with. This involves crafting visually appealing and user-friendly interfaces. Think of it as the look and feel of a website or application. UX designers, on the other hand, concentrate on the overall user experience. They dive into user research, information architecture, and usability testing to ensure that the product is not only visually pleasing, but also intuitive and enjoyable to use. UI UX designers are responsible for the entire user journey. They work on both the aesthetics and the functionality to create a seamless and delightful user experience. To decide which path suits you best, just reflect on your interests. Are you drawn more towards the visual aspects, user research, or maybe both? Once you've chosen your path, it's time to take the next step. Learn the design principles. Before you start designing the next big thing, you need to build a solid foundation. Learn the fundamentals of design like color theory, layout, visual hierarchy, typography, and many more. I can't tell you enough how important design principles are because if you don't build a strong foundation first, you'll struggle throughout your design journey. At this stage, I suggest you take a beginner course of your choice to learn the ins and outs of UI UX design. If you wanna learn about design principles, UI elements, and visual design in general, you can download my free ebook called Essentials of User Interface Design from the link in the description below. Step three, learn a design tool. Once you've learned the design principles, start learning a design tool like Figma, Sketch, or any other tool. It doesn't matter which tool you choose, but make sure to master it. My recommendation is Figma, because it offers you everything you need as a UI UX designer for free, and more and more companies are using Figma as their primary design tool. Once you've mastered the design tool, please stick to it. Don't try to learn every design tool out there because it doesn't serve you anything good. What matters is you and your knowledge, not the tool you are using. The next step is to start designing. And this is the best part because finally you can apply everything you've learned to a project. But wait, wait, wait. If you're just starting out, you're not going to have any clients. And if you don't have any clients, then you're not going to have any projects to work on. So how should you practice then? Here is what you can do. You can start a 30-day design challenge. How does it work? You'll start by replicating existing apps and websites. Each day, you'll complete one simple task. For instance, you can design a sign-up page for an app, a contact us form, etc. If you run out of ideas, you can use ChatGPT to generate some. Simply ask, generate 30 simple UI design challenges and you'll be good to go. The most important thing is to be consistent and design something every single day. But you may say, Arash, how am I supposed to become a designer by just copying others? Let me tell you a secret. The best thing you can do when you are just starting out is to copy what other designers do. Why? Because this way you will truly understand how the design principles should be applied to a project and you'll train your eyes subconsciously. After a while, you'll immediately recognize the issues with the design. For instance, whether the color combination looks good or not, or if the spacing is done correctly. After the design challenge, what you can do is redesign existing websites and apps. This way, you can learn what works and what doesn't, how to improve an existing design, and find your weaknesses and strengths. One thing I'd like you to do is publish your daily design on social media and seek feedback. Believe me, there are many people out there who could benefit from your daily posts because you might be ahead of them in this design journey. After this step, you can use a design idea generator and design a few projects completely, not just one page per project. Now that you've put what you've learned into practice, it's time to craft your own portfolio. Think of it as your highlight reel, showcasing your best work, design methods, and case studies. Potential employers or clients will check out your portfolio to understand your design methodology and if you're a good fit for them. Just a quick heads up, 
A portfolio isn't the same as a resume. A resume outlines your background, qualifications, and past experiences on a single page. A portfolio is more like a deep dive into a few projects and case studies explaining how you tackle design challenges. You don't need a ton of projects in your portfolio. Having at least two projects and two case studies should do the trick. Now you may ask, what's the difference between a project and a case study? Let me break it down for you. A project in your portfolio is like a snapshot of your work. It's a showcase of a specific piece you've created like an app or a website. It highlights the final product and gives a glimpse of what you can do. On the other hand, a case study is like a behind the scenes documentary. It goes deeper into one of your projects explaining the entire process. A case study typically includes details about the problem you were trying to solve, your creative approach, the steps you took, the challenges you faced, and how you overcame them. It's a way to demonstrate not just the final result, but your problem-solving skills and design thinking throughout the entire journey. In essence, a project is the finished product, while a case study is the story behind how you got there. Including both in your portfolio gives viewers a comprehensive understanding of your abilities and how you approach design challenges. Here is a bonus point. Tailor your portfolio to the specific type of work you're seeking. For instance, if you are pursuing a visual design role, emphasize UI design projects over other types of work. Now you might be wondering, Arash, I lack coding skills, so how can I create a portfolio? The good news is you don't need to code at all. There are some user-friendly online platforms available for this purpose, such as Dribbble, Behance, UXfolio, etc. My top pick, Behance. It allows you to effortlessly create a professional looking portfolio in minutes, and guess what? It won't cost you a dime. It also increases your chances of being recognized in the market and helps you connect with other designers. All right, your portfolio is all set. Now it's time to dive into job applications. Don't hesitate to apply to multiple positions at once. Later, you can decide which one suits you best based on the job requirements. If you happen to face rejection in an interview, don't let it get you down. Remember, it's all part of the journey. Rejections don't define your skills as a designer. They're just pointers that there is room for improvement. Use the experience to refine and enhance your skill sets. During interviews, ask questions about your potential responsibilities and the projects you'd be working on. It not only shows your interest, but also helps you understand if the job is the right fit for you. Last but not least, keep practicing. Even if you are not a beginner, you should always keep learning. There is no other way to improve your design skills. If you want to learn more about UI UX design principles, make sure to check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more UI UX design tutorials. Have a great day and see you soon.